This is your Cosmic Briefing, a short clip from the Urantia Book for Dummies. Please, stand by. There is no doubt whatsoever that this is a fateful moment in history. Wherever we look, politically, religiously, economically, environmentally, there is insecurity and instability. It's not too much to say that the future of the West and the unique form of freedom it has pioneered for the past four centuries is altogether at risk. There's a great deal of cultural ammunition in the marketplace of ideas which reports that this civilization, confusion and turmoil is all related somehow to the end times, an Armageddon or an apocalypse. Current literature and many films and movies have promoted these ideas ad nauseum. The Urantia book does not support these ideas, and to demonstrate this, I would like to share with you a parable that is based upon actual events. In your mind's eye, imagine this if you would. Let us go back in time, back to 430 AD, Carthage, North Africa, hot, dry, dusty, Mediterranean, and Roman. A young man stands on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea, looking out towards the horizon. He is a Roman. This is a Roman world. He was born into a Roman world, played in a Roman world, was educated in a Roman world. He anticipated being married in a Roman world, bringing children into a Roman world, educating them in a Roman world, and in all probability die in a Roman world with a Roman burial. Above all, he was a Roman. But rumors about Rome has fallen, sacked, burned to the ground by the barbarians. As the young man stands by the sea, he sees the ships, the ships of doom and destruction sailing in his direction, coming to lay waste his land, his home, his family. In his fear and panic, he turns and starts to run. He runs for two days, resting only when he can no longer carry on, running through the North African solitude to the city of Hippo, the home of his teacher, the master teacher Augustine. As he nears the city, he sees the smoke and the flames, and he knows that he is too late. He begins searching for his teacher through the throngs of the people leaving the burning city. And upon finding him, he falls on his knees at the master's feet, crying, wailing, and with tears streaming off his chin, he cries out to the old philosopher, Master, master, is this the end of the world? Is this the Armageddon you told us about? Will this be the end of us and our world? The master, singed and stinging from his own wounds, picks up the boy and looking him straight in the eyes, says to him, Fear not, my son. You do not have anything to be afraid of. Then, with a knowing in his eyes, he spoke to the very soul of the lad, saying, my boy, my boy, this is not the end of the world. Worlds do not end. Human systems change. You have nothing to fear, because walking in the streets of the cities of man are the builders of the cities of God. Today, we too stand on the shores of the sea of humanity, looking outward towards our horizon. 
and we too see the ships of doom and destruction coming to lay waste our civilization. The ships of medical pandemic, the ships of economic collapse, the ships of greed and selfishness, the ships of religious and civil warfare, and of terrorism. And many too cry out, Is this the end of the world? Is this the Armageddon our prophets of today speak of? Is this the end of our civilization as we know it? And in response, I reiterate the words of the master teacher Augustine, Worlds do not end. Human systems change. And you have nothing to fear, because walking in the streets of the cities of man are you, the builders of the cities of God. You are the one. You are the one that we have been waiting for. This is not the end of something. This is the beginning of something. Something bigger than anything we have ever imagined in the history of the human race. Certainly, we are facing our greatest challenge. The blizzard of the world has crossed the threshold and it has overturned the order of the soul. But the 196 papers of the Urantia book make it forever certain that materialistic determinators are not the exclusive law of the cosmos. Materialism is there, but it is not exclusive. Mechanism is there, but it is not unqualified. Determinism is there, but it is not alone, because we are not alone. There is a spirit within you that is the reality of your own personal experience. In paper 102, the ranch book says, Man very early becomes conscious that he is not alone in the world or the universe. There develops a natural, spontaneous self-consciousness of other-mindedness in the environment of selfhood. We have seen this in all the wisdom traditions of our ancestors. Faith translates this natural experience into the spiritual recognition of God, as you understand it. But God is the reality, the source, nature, and destiny of other-mindedness. But such a knowledge of God is ever and always a reality of personal experience, not dogmas and doctrines. If God were not a personality, he could not become a living part of the real spiritual experience of a human personality. We are facing our greatest opportunity, the opportunity to build a new civilization and to know that we are not alone, that we have help, cosmic help, and this should imbibe us with a sense of destiny and enthusiasm never before seen on our planet. The work is ours. The consequence is God's. The cities are ours. The result will be the Supremes, one step closer to the age of light and life. It is our only course of action. The old is breaking down, but the new is breaking through. Today our task is to integrate these great cosmic intuitions of our cosmic mind into a unified philosophy, a worldview, that will strengthen the fabric of goodwill in the world. To bring in the new day of our human well-being is our spiritual birthright. We need a deeper sense of reality based and including spiritual values. And a new perception of humanity as a unit of divine life within an ordered and purposive universe. Humanity is not a haphazard or uncharted course There is a plan. This plan has always existed 
and is part of the greater design of the cosmos. The plan has worked out through the evolutionary developments of the past and because of the special impetus giving it from time to time by the great leaders, teachers, and people of goodwill of the human race, it has moved us forward and moved us forward and moved us forward. But it is not magic. The real magic is taking the first consciously reflective animals to emerge on the planet, split them into seven or eight races of humanity, and then get them to create ways to live together. First in society, then in tribes, then nations, and now to a whole and complete planetary civilization. This is the real magic of the universe. To turn animals into Superman. <laughs> Nietzsche's Superman. This has been a Cosmic Briefing, a short clip from the Urantia Book for Dummies. Please click the subscribe button above and then follow these links for a full presentation of this briefing. Thank you.